By the way, this is not a super chat, but hi, Dom. I see you in chat. Dom says, uh, our governor in Wisconsin just put restaurants and bars back at 25% capacity. Most restaurants are just blatantly ignoring it now. That's a kind of war, I think. Yes, that is like civil disobedience. That's what I want to see more of. It's almost like we haven't even, we're fighting, right now we're fighting an ideological war. We're fighting a war of words. And we're fighting a war with behaviors that are not violent. Like, why haven't, why would we jump straight to violence? Like, try civil disobedience. I want to see tons of small business owners saying, no more. We will not comply. I agree with you. And I think a a good way to do this is, is because because what you really want is you want to give your local law enforcement an opportunity to choose the right side. <laughs> so what you want to do, because there are some still some some good freedom loving local probably more in small towns than big cities, right? So if you defy an order, and the police are ordered to go shut your restaurant down, that gives your sheriff an opportunity to say to look the governor in the eye and say no. I'm not. I'm not going to enforce these laws in right. my county. And that is a much better position to be in um, because you're, you're, you're getting a community behind you. You're getting a community behind you and you're taking a stand and people will have to go. People will necessarily be arrested, go to jail like those Christians who were arrested in Idaho that we covered. If you are a Christian, it, it, first of all, if you're a pastor, open your church. What the heck are you doing sitting on the sidelines like obeying the state? Open your church. Churches are ne- are a necessary place for people to go during a time like that. It's necessary as a doctor. I, in my opinion, it's a doctor yeah. for your soul. Churches yeah. are necessary. Open your church, and if you're if you're not a pastor, but you're someone who's a Christian and your church is closed, pressure your church to open or find a place that is open and meeting. Yep. I can't believe we're six months in and there are some churches that are still closed. Right. Right. I am worried. Someone in chat pointed out the way that this is going to work from a gun perspective is they will slowly, as they have been, slowly make it more and more difficult to obtain uh, ammunition and firearms. And yeah, it's an attrition war. I don't think, though, that they can win because I think the left, I think the authoritarians need things to move too quickly for that, for them to play out the complete firearm attrition strategy. Um but so I think they're going to have to do something. This is why Beto's like, yeah, we're did coming you see, for your guns, right? Like, did you see de Blasio literally rounding up Jews in New York recently? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Christians take a page from the Orthodox J- Jewish people who are out saying, no, we will be out. We will do, we will go about our business as usual. You don't get to dictate how we worship. And, and what happened? They got rounded up. By yep. de Blasio, that's going to happen to some people. But if you if you believe, it's like you say, Carter. What does your faith mean? If if it, what does right. your faith mean? If if it's so if it's so fragile that you're willing to stand down out of fear, or I mean, maybe it's just laziness. Maybe you like the break from going to church. In which case, I would say there's something wrong with your heart or there's something wrong with your church. Maybe find one that you want to go to that you yeah. get up and you're like, yes, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I'm, I know I'm just speaking to the Christians here. I'm sorry, atheist. Thanks for tolerating me. Um, well, and, look, community and, is important. Yeah. Someone in chat mentioned, like, if you say community, you get more atheists rather than soul. Right. And I think that's right. Look, yeah. Community is is important. Like we do. We can't. <sighs> Uh, unlike people who try and conflate individualism with living on an island and being isolated and having no friends, <laughs> that individualism doesn't preclude community. We're social animals. We need community. We thrive in community. We need to be around other people. Um, and and we have a right to associate with people. We have a right to be around other people. Think about the laws right now that like you can't voluntarily gather in certain groups yeah. above a certain size somewhere. On private property, that On is. I, I don't, if that's not tyranny, I don't know what tyranny is. What is yeah. what is your idea of tyranny? If that's not it, oh well, but it's for your own good because there's a virus. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay, everything's for your own good. It's yes. always for your own good. Um, hey, guess what? Go to go celebrate Halloween. Those places that have said no Halloween, right. you can't celebrate. 
uh, go celebrate Halloween. That's an act of rebellion. If you're not a Christian and you want to do something, go celebrate a holiday without right. ad- adhering to where, when and where. Because just like we talked about earlier, if you are not figuring out what s- narrative and what belief system and what ideas you are allowing in your child's world, someone else is going to figure that out. The public schools or social media, the, the culture is going to fill in those blanks. Well, it's the same thing for, they're trying to do the same thing for where we're allowed to go, who we're allowed to have community with and interact with. They're basically like, you can't have community in these ways, celebrating holidays, going to church, going to funerals, um, going to synagogue. But you can have community if you come to our protests and riots. That's where you can have community. You can have community online in our our social media prisons where we get to dictate what you read and what you say. Communion wines <laughs> off limits, but have the Molotov cocktail. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to force how how it is, how it is that the ways in which we interact with others and the ways in which we form community, they are trying to create these like narrow set of rules for for how it is that we interact with others. Don't stand for that. Yeah. Do something rebellious. And don't I never fall thought for I the say, false yeah, you go ahead. I never thought I would say, like, do something rebellious, go to church, <laughs> but do it. Don't fall you know? for the false dichotomy, though, that, like, yeah. you either – it's not – wanting to get together with other people without the state prohibiting that, it's, it's, it's not – the only other option isn't that you think COVID is a hoax. That's a false dichotomy. You can think that yeah. there's a virus and that there's risks associated with it and people should be safe and the government should not dictate your right. To, they shouldn't limit your right to free assembly um, and they shouldn't force yeah. you to close your businesses. Those are those are not like it's, it's not an impossible position to have. But the mainstream position, they want you to feel like if you believe that there's any threat at all, you must also believe that the government has every right to control your every movement and how you breathe. They're literally controlling how you are allowed to breathe. Yes, they are literally controlling that. And there are people that are, they are pushing fear as a virtue. They are trying to get you yes. to think your fear is virtuous and, and it's easy to manipulate you when you're fearful. Uh, I just wanted to read something really quick along these lines. Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 survival rate for COVID is over 99.7%. Okay. Yeah. Um, somebody in my small community group posted yesterday, I find it strange that with our town still reporting COVID cases, there's a carnival opening. Okay. We have a carnival coming to town. <laughs> it, it, they put it up in this parking lot every well, season. Well, just stop reporting okay, COVID cases. The, we'll be fine. Right. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> this is, this is the best response. First response. This is from a mom. She says, my youngest son is going to the carnival with some friends. We are not worried. If he gets it, it will suck for about 10 days and then he will be fine. I had it in July, as did my husband and my oldest. He (laughs) needs normalcy in his life. It's good for his mental health. He practices safe precautions when out. Okay, that's what that's to your point, Carter, about this woman's had it. She knows it's not a hoax. She knows the dangers of it. She's making sure her son takes precautions. And yet she's still letting him go out about his life instead of being ruled by fear and hiding like a church mouse. Yep. Like be rebellious. Go to church. Be rebellious. Have a party. Have more than 10 people over. Yep. Be rebellious. Go trick or treating for Halloween. Yeah, yeah, you, you know the ways um, in which you, you interact with people. You choose. I was thinking. I don't usually advocate for getting involved in in politics, and I know we've talked more about local politics and city council and that kind of stuff. You know, I was thinking, given all of this, if you're going to get involved in anything, sheriff, sheriffs are elected. If all we control is the sheriff's office. You'd be surprised at how far that goes in terms of protecting your liberties. If all of your of all of your pro liberty efforts go to electing the right sheriff, a lot of this stuff disappears because mm. these laws can't be enforced with a sheriff that refuses to enforce them. 
Uh, so you can undermine a lot of what they're doing just by focusing on the sheriffs. That's it. Just the sheriffs. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take that much work. So, Hey, this is not a super chat, but it's related to what we've been talking about. Nate, I just want to read Nate's quote. Nate says, as a small Bible study leader, I told my wife three months ago that I was done and we would be sensitive to people, but we would start up. We started our group back up and we've added more to the group even. Yes. You know why? Because people are more hungry than ever right now for truth and for God. I think this is my opinion. Christians, you are going to add more people to your fold if you're a Christian leader who decides to open your church because people are looking for meaning right now. We've been in this ridiculous lockdown for over six months. People are not go we don't have a sense of normalcy people are at home anxiety is increasing mental health disorders are increasing addictions increasing alcohol abuse domestic violence all these problems that people are are dealing with they are hungry for spiritual leaders so yep. anyway i wanted to read that because i think you did the yep. right thing i think they're hungry for people who are state theist blasphemers Right. Like they're basically hungry for someone who will stand up to the state and be like, no, yeah. I don't worship the state. I don't. And I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to say no to the state. Uh, yeah. You, you know, you're reminding me um, something you said about the the woman and the kids going to the carnival. You're reminding me of something about we talked about early on. Another negative effect that I don't hear talked about a lot, but I, I mentioned before the show, um, my wife is in China right now and she was, you know, sequestered in our house for, I don't know, when did we start locking down? Like early February? January. Or like January? You were locked down in January. Yeah, maybe February. it was January. We were locked down way before everyone else, right? So we're <laughs> super locked down. Uh, and we've been basically locked down. I mean, towards the end, I guess we went out a couple times because, uh, you know, we got sick of all this stuff and, and the threat wasn't what we thought it was. But basically, we've been locked down. She's been working from home. And... uh she a couple weeks ago she flew to china for work and she had to you know everyone on the plane had to take all like three different covid tests and they had to be within 12 hours and all this it was like crazy and then she got to china and she was basically in a <laughs> her medically sealed room for two weeks before they let her out into to the general population um well wow. and the moment she got out to gen pop <laughs> in china <laughs> she got a, she got sick not COVID, but like, and she was calling me. She's like, my immune system is just a, like, it's non-existent. <laughs> it's my immune system is yeah. non-existent because I've been yeah. stuck in these sanitized environments for six months. And uh, I, I think we're in for a problem. We're going to get out of these uh, if we ever get out of this phase. Um, and I've talked about the increased allergies and other stuff that will probably happen. But like we're, our immune systems need a little bit of, challenge otherwise they just kind of atrophy and um yeah. no, i'm not a doctor i don't yeah. know if that's the right terminology but they just kind of atrophy um and yeah. I, I guess we just don't care i don't know 